What's on guys, we are back with a brand new video. Now, sorry for the upload yesterday, I was a bit busy yesterday, but we're back again with an absolute idea that is kind of a weird one, if you don't get what I mean. So, in today's video, I'll be going over the X Factor players in the AFL. Now, for this video, I decided I need to put a bit of a criteria behind every player that I picked. Now, I'll have to say, since it's every team in the comp, some players don't really have the X Factor player that probably fits this category but this is the definition that I've gone for for my X Factor because I didn't really find a definition that is like a global definition so I've gone for a player that can push forward and kick a goal a player that can play forward and midfield at, at an above average level and is dangerous with ball in hand so you'll see the more this video goes on uh, when you see every team you kind of understand of what I mean with X Factor players now, I can kind of think of an example. The biggest example is probably Dustin Martin. Um, another one's like Christian Petrarca. Uh, another one is like Jordan Degoe. Uh, so, they're kind of the players that are kind of around the X Factor level. And most teams have one, uh, apart from a couple. But you'll see, and if you guys don't agree with my opinion in this video, make sure to drop down in the comments if you, what you think an X Factor player should be for this team or what your personal like preference is for that team so without further ado make sure to follow my instagram and drop a like and a subscribe because we're so close to that big 450 so let's hit that subscribe button so without further ado let's get straight into this video and number one for adelaide i've gone with rory sloan now this is one of the cases where there wasn't actual a player that i could like put my finger on because even though Rory Sloan is a very good midfielder, his forward ability isn't up to like elite standard like some of the guys on this list. Um, but he at times he's shown his X factor. He's one of the one of the midfielders that can actually push forward and kick a goal, which kind of does fit this category. So that's why I've gone for Rory Sloan. Next up is Brisbane, and I've gone with Cam Rayner. Now, Cam Rayner, even though he, he's shown it at times, you can see that he's building into a player like Chris Matraka. Chris Matraka only had his breakout year back half of last year after getting drafted in 2014. So, even though Cam Rayner was only drafted in 2016, this could be the year that he finally turns it on. Next up for Carlton, I've gone with Jack Martin. Now, Jack Martin, coming over from Gold Coast last year, and you can see this man has X Factor. The one game he really looked at is the game against Richmond. We kicked four goals in uh, the second half. And at times, he's been thrown to the midfield. And he's one of the players when he grabs the ball, something happens, which very, very well does fit this cat, does fill this category out perfectly. For Collingwood, I've gone with Jordan Degoe. Now, this is one of the most prime examples of an X Factor player. Uh, he's an elite forward at times. He probably needs a bit more consistency to his game. Uh, and then when he goes into the midfield, he seems to make an impact every single time he goes in there. He's a clearance monster when he goes in there. And I expect him with the the removal of Adam Trelaw in that midfield to him to have a big year in the midfield if they decide to play him there because he's definitely shown some elite capabilities. Next up for Essen, I've gone with Jake Stringer. Now, Stringer at times has lacked his fitness levels but he's been an All-Australian forward before. Uh, in times in 2020, he did get thrown into the midfield. And every, like when they need a clearance, they chuck him in there and he gets it. Because he's just a dangerous player like that. He has ability to play midfield. The only thing that really holds him from being a full-time midfielder is that he's so good forward. And also, his fitness levels at times. He's not. He doesn't have really that, that good of a tank to be able to run all day in the midfield. Which is why he's probably a forward. Because he's definitely shown capabilities. Now next up for Fremantle, I've gone with Nat Fife. Now this is another primary example of an X-Factor player. His ability to push forward and kick goals. In 2020, he was mostly a forward, playing about like 60-40 uh, in forward and midfield. And I think John Long Longmire said that they are actually training him in, in the forward group because they do believe that he can be a dangerous forward. Who knows, could be a common medal coming up for this man because he can do everything. The next up, Budge Along, I've gone with Patrick Dangerfield. Now, he's another guy that did play a lot of forward in 2020, but we know that he won a Brownlow in the midfield. And when he's gone there, he's, I think he kicked four against Collingwood or something like that. 
Uh, my facts could be wrong there, but I remember he just had a brilliant game picking them two bananas from the pocket. Was unstoppable, Tom Hawkins, at, at times. Uh, and they, they actually chucked him there because, obviously, they found out the game plan of Geelong, which was just send it to Tom Hawkins. They can't do that in 2021 since they have Jeremy Cameron there now, but you can see why they chucked Patrick Dangerfield forward. Now, next up for Gold Coast, I've gone with Isaac Rankin. Now, I originally was thinking about chucking Sam Flanders there, but he hasn't really shown his capabilities yet since he's only played like three games. But I feel like Isaac Frankie does have, you know, the elite foot skills to create something every time he gets the ball. We've seen that so far in his career, his ability to create goals. Uh, he's been chucked in the midfield a couple of times so far in his career, and he's really shown good signs. So I would not be surprised if this man goes into the midfield. Next up for GWS, I've gone with Toby Green. Now, of all his career, we've seen his great uh, ability to actually be an elite small forward and probably the best small forward in the comp on his great days. Uh, but when you look at his midfield, he's got Chuck midfield sometimes. Uh, obviously, he probably would play midfield in a lot of different teams. But obviously, we know how much talent they've got in there with like Coniglio, Hopper, Cal Ward, Josh Kelly, Lockie Whitfield. I'm, I'm definitely missing some more players because I just have stacked the talent. Uh, so remember in that 2019 year when he got chucked into the midfield, I think on the semi-final because they had so many players out. Uh, and that's when Zach Williams had his breakout game in that prelim final because of their lack of midfields because of so many injuries. And that's where we really got to see the late Toby Green. And also earlier in his career, uh, early days of GWS actually being a football club, he was drafted into a midfielder and he played a lot of midfield and that's how he actually got his first riding start on when he had like 35 touches, which was uh, when we thought he was going to be a midfielder, but obviously now he's a great forward. Next up for Hawthorne, I've gone with Chad Wingard. Now, even though he's not the player, you would have to think that he was uh, in Port Adelaide, but this guy was actually in Brownlow conversations until about round five where I think he got injured. I could be completely wrong there, but I remember something happened to him and then it kind of threw off. But he has shown elite levels of midfield play. We all know how good he is forward. He's won a mark of the year forward. He's got a lot of goals forward when he was at Port Adelaide. Uh, but now at Hawthorne, he's starting to get a little bit more. He's starting to get some midfield time under his belt. And he's definitely elite. He's a great kick of the football. Um, every time he gets the ball, something happens. Very, very good. Next up for Melbourne, I've gone with a Brownlow favourite, Kristen Petraka. Now, early days in his career, like a lot of players on this list, he was a, mainly a forward, but his tank was always the problem of why he was not a midfielder. He was drafted as a midfielder, but in about 2019 is where he took the jump into the midfield and hasn't really looked back since then. Playing mostly midfield, but he's had games like the game against Saints where he kicked four and single-handedly won him the game. And that's what we talk about when we think of X-Factor players. Chris Matraka is definitely an X-Factor player. Next up for North Melbourne is a guy that I wasn't too sure if he was in the X-Factor bracket, but I put him here anyway, which is Cam Zerha. Now, Cam Zerha has not really developed a tank to be a midfielder yet, but he's shown capabilities. He's had a few times where he's gone in there, got a clearance. Um, every time he gets the ball, it seems that something happens, which definitely fits this category. But his forward craft is what makes him elite. I feel like he could be the leading goal kicker this year. He can almost play, I think he's Probably his best comparison is probably Jordan Ngoi. He's on this list also. He seems to have the ability to be a small, like a mini full forward, which is what I think we'll see a lot of from this man in 2021. Next up for Port Adelaide, I've gone with Connor Rosie. Now, Connor Rosie in 2021 spent a little bit more time midfield, and we all know how good he was his first year, almost winning the Rookie of the Year if it wasn't for Sam Walsh, who was just a different breed that year. He said the ability to have games where he kicks four and five, which is ridiculous. Um, something happens every time he gets the ball. I think I'm saying this about every single player because they're all in this category. Uh, but very, very good. And I can't wait to see this guy actually play midfield in 2021. Next up is a guy that we all know about, Dustin Martin. Don't really have to say much about this man. We've seen him in the big stage kick bags with 30 touches so you know what we'll just move on because we want to hear about Dustin Martin next up for St Kilda I've gone with Jay Gresham now this guy has been underrated and thrown under the radar after being probably one of the only known St Kilda players when they were down the bottom of the ladder uh, he, had, he had years where he kicked 
uh, 40 plus goals. I think he said two years we kicked 30, 40 plus goals, which is ridiculous. Now he's a clearance monster for the Saints, and a big reason why they were a bit a bit down in the back half of 2020, even though they obviously did win their their finals game. But you can see that they really miss him in the midfield. In some games, they just got beaten because they couldn't actually get a clearance. And Jay Gresham is an absolute clearance machine, and we all know how good he is in front of goals. Next up for Sydney, I've gone with Isaac Heaney. Now, one of the most hyped players for Sydney, ever since Buddy Franklin. He's absolute great at what he does. Uh, he's taken a mark of the year over Jesse Hogan, which screams X Factor. He can kick goals. They'll play him as a mini full forward until um, the injury from of him that took him out for the all 2020 and i expect this man to be a more of a midfielder in that future because he's already shown how good he is a forward that he seems to build his tank to be a midfielder next up i've gone with liam ryan for west coast now we all know how good he is in front of goals being the all australian small forward this year the only the only small forward that actually made the all australian team this year it's definitely saying something, his marking ability is off the charts for a small forward, uh, which put, really puts him in this elite category for, as an X-Factor player. Um, he's a great kick, he's a magician with the ball. Uh, once he gets a bit more midfield time, which I don't know if he'll ever actually go into a midfielder, but he's had spurts in the midfield uh, when they've needed a guy, but I don't know if he'll ever be a full-time midfielder. He doesn't quite fit, the, fit this X-Factor category, but I feel like if it was any West Coast player, it's probably him. Um, I was thinking about putting Dom Sheed in here, but I feel like that Liam Ryan is definitely the X Factor player for West Coast. Now, last on this list is for the Western Bulldogs, Marcus Bonapelli. Now, I expect this man to play a lot of forward in 2021, being about the only midfielder for Western Bulldogs that can actually kick goals, apart from maybe Josh Dunkley. Uh, so I expect him to play a lot of forward, not play that many midfield because they're absolutely stacked with midfielders, which I think could actually hinder Western Bulldogs. But Marcus Bonapelli is definitely their X Factor player. So thanks for watching guys, make sure to drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe, follow the Instagram, and comment down below what your X Factor player is for your team, and thanks for watching.